I wanted to show you a couple of things that are available in the NuGet tool window in Rider. So this is the NuGet tool window and I have opened a solution that has five projects in them and a lot of installed packages. And if we open up the NuGet tool window, we can see all of the in installed packages in there. Uh, we can search for packages. So if you search, for example, for AutoMapper, we'll see that we can find the packages that are installed into our projects, but also the ones that are available on NuGet.org and that we can add to our, uh, to our application and our solution here. On the right hand side, you'll see in which projects that AutoMapper in this case is installed. So in these two projects, we can see the version, we can do upgrades from here and so on. Now, uh, related to search, I wanted to mention that there's a couple of things that are really interesting and that you may not be aware of. So first of all, there's obviously the fact that we can search for a library like uh, benchmark.net. But I had to type that entire search query, or at least something that resembles it. Of course, we found it, but still we had to type the entire word there, or at least a big part of it. What Rider also supports is searching for BDN using those camel humps. Since benchmark.net is benchmark.net, with a capital B, capital D, capital N, we can search for BDN and you'll see that benchmark.net is also found using that, uh, that search query. Uh, another thing that Rider does is it takes typos into account. So again, with benchmark.net, let's say if we search for Beneshmark, you'll also see that benchmark.net is found because that typo, Benesh and Bench are similar enough, so Rider will find that package for us and allows us to, uh, to install it into our projects. Uh, another thing that is maybe also not super obvious is that everything you see in the tool window is a filter that is combined into everything else you are doing there. So for example, if we want to upgrade all packages in our solution and we have no search query and our entire solution selected here in the dropdown of projects, what will happen is if we do an upgrade all packages, you'll see all of the packages in our solution. And if we say wanted to only update those that are in the NuGet project, we would have to go down and find those and then disable those and then do an upgrade all of everything that is in the NuGet project that we have there. Now there's an easier way of doing this because if we wanted to upgrade all packages in just one project, what we can do is filter to just one project, in this case that NuGet one, and then do an upgrade all. And you'll see that now everything in there is scoped to that project. So no uh, other projects are listed there. It's really just this one. Now imagine that in this project, we wanted to update all of those Microsoft.extensions packages. What we can do here is again, disable those that we don't want to update, but of course that gets cumbersome and rather boring rather quickly. So what we can do instead is search for Microsoft dots and you'll see that the installed packages list is filtered now for Microsoft.extensions in our NuGet project. And if we now do an upgrade all, you'll also see that only those three packages are selected. So we didn't have to go through the list and uh, disable all of the packages that we did not want to upgrade. By using the search query as well as a project filter, we now have uh, the option to just update the ones that we want to update here. Uh, a couple of other things. Let's go back to our solution and let's search for, say, uh, Entity Framework. What you'll see is if you Alt-Enter in the search results, there's a context menu that gives you actions to show more details about this package on NuGet.org, for example, open the project page, look at the license, uh, search with Google, and, and so on. Uh, different packages will have different results. So, for example, if we search for Identity Server, there's probably going to be an alt interaction that also shows the GitHub page. So depending on the metadata that the package will specify, there's going to be different entries in this context menu, but still it's quite handy to uh, figure out what this project is about, maybe find the readme file on GitHub and then start working with it if you want. Uh, on the right hand side of this panel, there's also a couple of things. So let's select one package and go to the right hand panel here. Uh, in here, we can select the versions that we want to install, and the one that we select here will be used for this Upgrade All uh, button, or for just this upgrade in a specific project. Uh, another thing that is available here is, again, Alt-Enter actions. So if you wanted to install AutoMapper in, say, this testing project, we can do an Alt-Enter, and there's an Install option there. For the ones where you already installed this package, there's an Alt-Enter, and you can upgrade or remove that package. Uh, another thing in this list on the right hand side is that there's speed search. So imagine you want to install something in the WPF project. What you can do is start typing WPF 
and you immediately jump to that project and you can start working with it and alt enter and install it there for example so that's a couple of the things that are in there uh, there's a couple of other tabs in the tool window here as well there's the sources one so if you want to configure your own nuget feed you can uh, add them here and create a new feed and consume packages from that one You'll also see that Rider takes into account the NuGet inheritance rules. So NuGet has a global configuration file typically on your system. Uh, there may be multiple of those and NuGet tries to combine all of those into the one that is active while you are using NuGet. So Rider is doing the same. We can see the effective NuGet.config that is used at runtime will combine the feeds from NuGet.config and from this Visual Studio.offline config that I have on my system. So we can see that there. Uh, speaking about feeds, there's also a properties tab here where you can specify where NuGet will download packages. So by default, this will be in your user profile folder. But if, for example, you want to move all of the cached packages on your system to a, another hard drive, for example, you can set a path here and then Rider will respect that and install packages there, consume packages from there instead of the default that is in your, uh, in your home directory. Speaking about uh, packages folders, there's a folder step here as well. And in the folder step, we can look at how much uh, disk space all of the different NuGet cache folders are using. So um, Rider will refresh those and we'll, we'll see the results come back in a bit because it's now scanning my file system in the background. But what we can do here is look at the size of all of those caches, but also clear out all of those caches. So imagine you're using a uh, NuGet feed and for some reason new packages are not showing up what you can do is clear the http cache from nuget select the http cache clear it from the toolbar here and then that cache is gone and now typically that package will show up in the feed after all uh, if you think that there's a global packages folder in your uh, home directory that is too big in my case it's four gigabytes more or less what you can do there is also clear the entire uh, content from that cache and then uh, Rider will download NuGet packages again once you open and restore packages in a new solution.